Thank you for the introduction. So greetings from Tallinn University. My dear colleague Enelas and I, we conducted a research and uh, I'm going to introduce you the results alone. Um, artificial intelligence has been around for years, for several decades, and it has actually never created any confusion, any debate among foreign language teachers, except for maybe to what extent we can use Google Translate. Should it be banned? Can we use it? But that's it. But something happened last year, last autumn. I was working with my project in the US in South Carolina. I was completely cut off from the daily life of my university. I didn't know what was going on and I received a phone call, online phone call from my very dear colleague. You know something is going on. Her hands were shaking, mine started to shake immediately. There is something we couldn't even name what this something was, but it was platform, program, system, whatever it was. It's going to take your work. There is something that can teach languages, that can produce uh, research papers, anything. My uh, blood pressure started to raise. I, I thought that maybe I should stay here, maybe I should start looking for another job. Not even a job, but a new profession, because I'm going to be out of my job one day. But then I started to look into it, and I became very quickly a friend with uh, GP, uh, ChatGPT. But that's not uh, how it goes with everybody. Within the foreign language teacher community, there are very straight, uh, very strictly two sides. No one is neutral. Either you are for ChatGPT, either you are against using ChatGPT in the classroom. And that, of course, depends on your personal experience, professional experience, attitudes, and so on. So, Anna and I, we both are linguists and we are teacher trainers. Uh, which means that uh, we teach future foreign language teachers, we teach them, we provide them with tools, how to cope with language teaching, with problems that emerge in the classroom, and among those tools, of course, there are digital solutions. So we need to know what teachers are thinking about ChatGPT. What they think about artificial intelligence in general is not relevant, but specifically about ChatGPT. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there are not very many studies conducted on, in the field, namely on ChatGPT, uh, in the foreign language classroom. But those results are quite um, supportive, meaning that. We can work closely together with ChatGPT. I can still have my job, other teachers can have their job, but we can make a ChatGPT as an ally. But how to do it? Uh, when you start uh, building or creating some reforms in an institution, then there are always very many fears. The same applies here. Something new appears very quickly as it was ChatGPT, and it provokes fears. It's the fear of unknown. I don't know how to react. I don't know how to relate to it. Everything that I don't know, I don't want to use it. Um, before supporting our future teachers in using or not using ChatGPT, so we need to know what is happening within our university. Uh, how our colle uh, colleagues, foreign language teachers, how our students react and how they relate to it. Uh, information and data about chat TBT is very time sensitive. So as soon as we had this idea, we quickly looked for uh, possible questionnaires and background questions, and we wanted to do it immediately, not to wait until the summer vacation has passed, because then maybe it's not relevant anymore. We don't know. Things change so quickly. So we did it in May, June. We sent out several uh, invitations to answer the, the survey. We managed to have 100 participants exactly. There were students and there were language teachers. There was one prerequisite. Uh, the respondent had to have some previous experience with using chat GPT. So we did not simply want to know people's attitudes towards chat GPT, but 
uh, this attitude had to be based on their previous experience. Uh, so activity perception questionnaire is framed by self-determination theory, which has been my, like, uh, my theory for all my career. My background is in educational psychology and self-determination uh, theory very well explains human motivation. And that is why we chose uh, that questionnaire. And we conducted T-tests uh, analysis of variance to see some, whether there were some differences between the groups. So the most important uh, results here show that, uh, and it corroborates actually with this few studies conducted before us in the field of foreign languages, that uh, participants feel perceived choice. It means that whenever they feel that now I would like to use ChatGPT, they are autonomous in their decision making, they do it. And this result is very high, which actually goes together with this result that they have relatively low level of stress, meaning that there is no pressure. They use ChatGPT whenever they want to use ChatGPT. Now I feel that it's time, I want to try it out. There is no pressure, which is good news. It's always good news uh, to have that the stress level is low. And there is also a relatively high level of interest and enjoyment. In human motivation, this is the pure intrinsic motivation when people do it because they enjoy the activity itself. Uh, of course, we didn't ask specific questions about what exactly they enjoyed, what was the fun about, but uh, we can imagine only that it's like we, say, uh, like we heard from the previous presenters, that it's playing around, asking different kinds of questions, trying it out, and why not to use it in doing your home assignments. Uh, so they perceive some value in it. And that also can mean that within their studies, because most uh, respondents were the students, uh, MA and BA level students, so they have learned in some way, to some extent, to use ChatGPT in, uh, in their studies. This is, of course, the most intriguing and uh, alarming question for the teachers. Can we trust ChatGPT? Can we, can we trust students using ChatGPT? And so on and so on. And this is one of the reasons, one of the inputs for fear. Uh, at one point, we don't understand whose work we are actually assessing. Is it student works? Is it uh, ChatGPT's uh, work? Or, or what? Um, you also can see that the, there is a moderate level of trust in AI, meaning that uh, the participants also feel that something is in the air, uh, but everybody is like waiting for what is happening next. And even uh, when I started, I said that the foreign language teachers community had this very heated discussions about the use of ChatGPT. It has calmed down, but there is something like uh, silence before the storm in the year because everybody is waiting for something, some guidelines or someone to tell us what to do. No one wants to take the responsibility to say, hey, it's good, let's use it. Or there are even some people who are waiting for someone to ban it. No, you can use it, but how can we ban it? It's there, it's everywhere. It's in our computers, it's in our head already, it's in, in everybody's home, so we cannot ban it, we have to live with it. So that's the moderate level of trust that we don't yet know. And, and sometimes people, when they use it, it's also about, I don't know if I can use it, if it's allowed to use it, because the messages from the teachers have not been that clear. Uh, so it's like touching the borders, the limits. And uh, although uh, some groups were very small, we still wanted to, to do, and uh, ANOVA actually allows to use, uh, to conduct this statistical analysis with small groups, because it's like a case study is within one university, so we can make some 
conclusions about it. But there are no differences, whether you are a student or you are uh, at BA level, MA level, or you are a language teacher. So here we are all together. And we also uh, wanted to know uh, in what kind of assignments or, or text creating uh, uh, tasks uh, they were using ChatGPT. So language editing, which seems very logical, paragraph generation, and this, uh, as we heard today also, it's all about uh, writing and asking the correct prompts. And translation between languages. Uh, so there are still so many questions to be asked uh, uh, before we can make up our minds, before we can give uh, very specific supporting guidelines to our future teachers. Uh, but we know that it is there, it is going to be there, and now it's the question, the first question, how to make it a friend. Uh, so it's easier to go along with all kinds of changes, to try to cope with it, to take your emotions down. Th this is our message to the future teachers. Sometimes they are technically better developed than we are. But uh, our message is that chat TPT in a language classroom is a huge advantage. Just try to figure out together with your students what the rules are, when in, and in what situations it's wise to use it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. I see a hand over there. Yeah. There's a microphone. Do you plan on repeating these studies with a larger group of people or maybe even across countries with colleagues? Thank you. We are not planning to repeat this mapping study. We are planning to do something, to dig deeper. Now, as we know the tendencies, now we are focusing deeper in what situations they are using and specifically teachers' attitudes, not attitudes, but experiences on the other side how they are using ChatGPT, what are the negative results, what can we learn from these negative results so that we can provide this information to the future teachers and in-service teachers as well. Thank you very much. And a quick question from a gentleman over there. Go ahead. Thank you for your talk. Uh, did you already make any strategic changes into uh, this academic year's courses or language courses based on your study? Uh, I cannot, cannot say that these are strategic changes, but uh, of course, yes, we had discussions and uh, there were teachers like demanding some regulations, some rules, some guidelines, and there are guidelines from the university, general guidelines. And so we try to abide by these uh, guidelines. We have to, not we have to, we want to, of course, to, to introduce uh, the possibilities of ChatGPT, the use of AI in the classroom, and to, just to raise the consciousness of our students and everybody involved. Thank you very much, Marilyn. This is all we have time for. Thank you.